Hello everyone, this is Andrew from Crown Academy of English. Today's lesson is a lesson about slang in British English, part four. So, this lesson is part four in a series of several videos about British slang. So, these are the previous videos in the series, and this is today's video. Part four. Very quick revision. This will take 10 seconds. Slang is very informal language. It is often used in spoken English, but not in written English. And we often consider it not to be not good English, but it is very common. So therefore, it is important for you to understand it. So, in this lesson, which is part four, you will learn the following slang words and expressions. Not my cup of tea. On about. Piece of cake. Pissed. Plastered. Pissed off. Pratt and quid. Okay, so let's start with this one. Not my cup of tea. Now this is an expression. Okay, it is a figurative expression. The literal meaning, so the word for word literal meaning, well this is a cup of tea. Okay, I'm sure you already understand this. So what does not my cup of tea mean? What is the meaning of this figurative expression? Well, it means not to my taste. Let me explain. If I don't like something, then the thing is not my cup of tea. The thing I don't like is not my cup of tea. So in fact, this is a polite way of saying you don't like something. So this is, it, it, it's quite informal, um, but it's polite, very polite in fact. This is very, very British in fact. And we often say it when someone asks us for our opinion and we don't want to insult them. So someone asks us, do we like something? And we don't like it, but we don't want to offend them. We don't want to insult them. Example, Jane asks, do you like my new hat? And Sarah replies, it's nice, but it's not my cup of tea. It's nice, but it's not my cup of tea. So Sarah, this means that Sarah, she quite likes the hat, but it's not to her taste. It's not to Sarah's taste. Sarah would not choose a hat like this. She doesn't particularly like it for her. Okay, so she's politely saying, no, I don't really like it. And Mark asks, do you like that car? And David replies, it's not my cup of tea. Perhaps David prefers more, more normal cars. Okay, perhaps this is too extravagant for David. It's not to his taste. It's not, it wouldn't be his choice. Okay. On about. So what does this mean? Well, this structure, to be on about something means um, to be talking about something. But th so this is the affirmative. But in fact, we often use it in the question form. In fact, we normally only use it in the question form. And here is the structure. What followed by the verb be in the question form followed by on about. And it's a question. So example. This is an example question. If what are you on about? 
So we say this to someone. Someone says something to us and we reply, what are you on about? And this means, what are you talking about? What are you saying? Okay. What are you talking about? So here we have the verb be in the question form. Are you? Followed by on about. Let's have a look at some more examples. What is he on about? What is he on about? So this means what is he talking about? What are they on about? So this means what are they talking about? And here we have one in the past form, the past simple. What was she on about? And so this means what was she talking about? So the real meaning of this is we ask someone this question when we don't understand them or we don't agree, sorry, we don't agree with what someone is saying. Okay, so yes, when we don't understand or we don't agree with what someone is saying. But it is informal and it's quite an aggressive question. It's quite rude because we're, we are suggesting that the other person is talking nonsense. Okay, that, that, that's the meaning of this. That's the use of it. It's if we think the other person is talking about stupid things or if we think the other person is wrong or not clear, if they're not clear in how they are talking, we would say this, what are you on about? So it's aggressive, it's, so it's quite rude. Let's look at some examples. So here, this is just a reminder of the form. So example one, the manager says, why are you late? David says, I'm not late. And the manager says, what are you on about? You're 30 minutes late. So what are you on about? You're 30 minutes late. So as I say, this is quite aggressive. So this means the manager is angry here. You know, what are you talking about? You know, he does not agree with what David is saying. Okay. You're 30 minutes late. He's angry here, the manager. And another example. Well, this is the context. This is the situation. Jane and Mark are in a maths class. And Mr. Jones is the maths teacher. But Jane doesn't understand the class. So she doesn't understand Mr. Jones. And after the class, Jane talks to Mark in private. Okay, so they are discussing the lesson. So here is Jane, very confused by um, the maths lesson. And so Jane says to Mark, what was he on about? What was he on about? So this, is, this means, what was he talking about? What was Mr. Jones talking about? So this shows that Jane did not understand what Mr. Jones was saying. She was confused and perhaps she didn't even agree with what Mr. Jones was saying. So this is quite sort of informal. And Mark says, I don't know. It was complicated. Okay. Piece of cake. This is an expression. So this is obviously the literal <laughs> This is the literal meaning of piece of cake, but that's not what the expression means. The expression means easy. If something is easy, it's a piece of cake. Jane asks, how was your exam? And Mark replies, it was a piece of cake. It was a piece of cake. And we always have the um, indefinite article ah, before this 
expression. It was a piece of cake. It was easy. Okay. Pissed. Careful. This is uh, yeah. This is this is rude. This is vulgar language. This is a swear word. So be very careful when you use this. If you use it. This is an adjective to describe a person. And it simply means to be drunk. To be drunk. And drunk means that you have consumed too much alcohol. You know, and you're slurring your words and you're falling over um, and you're not very well. Okay, so that's drunk. So this one is very rude and vulgar language. This is slightly better. This is less rude. Okay, so this is more polite. But the meaning is the same. This means drunk also. Okay, and Mark says, David is pissed. David here is pissed. Look, he has had too much to drink, too much alcohol. Or we can say, David is plastered, is plastered. So this is slightly more polite. This is more rude. Okay. David says, let's go to the pub and get pissed. Let's go to the pub and get pissed. So let's go to the pub and get drunk. Okay, so to get pissed means to become pissed. Or let's go to the pub and get plastered. Okay, so let's go to the pub and celebrate. Let's have lots of drink and let's get drunk. Okay, which is a very, unfortunately, it's a very common activity in Great Britain. Okay, I think people drink too much alcohol. Pissed off. So this is nothing to do with alcohol. This is different. Pissed off. And we use this as an adjective to describe a person. And it means annoyed or angry. So if someone is pissed off, then the person is annoyed or angry. Claire says, I failed the exam. I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off. And again, be careful. This is um, this is very strong language. Okay, this is um, very informal and and it's quite rude. It's quite sort of raw language. So um, be careful. Be careful with this. But you hear it a lot. Very very common. And we can also say pissed off at someone. And this means annoyed or angry at someone. So if there's someone who is causing us to be annoyed. Jane says, I'm pissed off at you. Pissed off at you. At you. Sarah says, why? What have I done? And Jane says, you lied to me. Okay, so pissed off at someone. Or just simply pissed off at nobody in particular. Okay. To piss someone off. So this is the same meaning, but this is now a phrasal verb. Okay. So this means to annoy someone. So here is the form. Piss someone off. And Sarah says, you're pissing me off. You're pissing me off. So she's saying to him, you are pissing me off. Okay. So this means you're annoying me. You're annoying me. Okay. So it's a phrasal verb. And again, uh, be careful. This is very aggressive and vulgar and rude. But you will hear it a lot in informal situations. 
Pratt. A noun. And it's a stupid person or someone who is doing stupid things. So stupid person who does stupid things. David says, why does John wear sunglasses indoors? And Mark says, because he's a prat. Okay, so this guy's a prat because he wears sunglasses indoors when there's no sun. Okay, he does stupid things. And often we call someone a prat as a joke. So we're joking, we're not being serious. We're just um, teasing someone. Example, Jane says, hi Sarah, would you like to come to my party? And Sarah replies, are you sure? I didn't realize you like me. And Jane says, don't be a prat, of course I like you. So Jane is saying, don't be stupid, of course I like you. So obviously Jane here is being, um, is joking. She doesn't really think that Sarah is a prat. She's just joking. Okay, so this is very common in British English. Quid. This is a Q, letter Q. We pronounce it quid. It's a noun. And quid is slang for pound. Pound being the British currency, the money that we use in Britain. This. But be careful of the form. The form of quid is always singular, even if the meaning is sometimes plural. So, example. Well, the price is one pound. So obviously this is singular because it is only one. And the slang is the same. The price is one quid. But in the plural, so the normal word pound, we put in the plural. The price is five pounds with an S. But the slang stays singular. The price is five quid. The price is five quid. We do not say the price is five quids. No, it's always singular. price is 10 pounds. The price is 10 quid. Singular. Okay. Very, very common. Examples. Jane asks, how much is the train ticket? Sarah replies, 16 quid. Singular. You can see the price here, 16 quid. John says, David, can I borrow five quid? Singular. This is a five pound note. This is what he's asking for. And David says, yeah, sure, no problem. Okay, so quid. Remember, it means pound and it's always in the singular form. Okay, there we are. That's the end of the lesson. Don't forget to check out our website. And here are some other videos which I recommend you watch.